Hey guys, welcome back to World of Warships, and again, looking at the Bungo. For the last time, for a little bit, now that they're in early access, and I feel like I understand what this line can do now. I've played them a lot. Uh, pretty much all last week, I only played these ships. And as you know, I did not really enjoy the Bungo at all to start with. And that was because I was just using the armor piercing. It's a very common thing to do at higher tier with 457 millimeter guns and 2.2 Sigma and a spotter plane that gives you 20% better dispersion. <laughs> it's pretty understandable, I think, to just use the AP when firing this ship. Much like a Vermont, you're looking for those opportunistic shots on broadside ships. You're looking to punish them at almost any range. But as you saw, the HE can do over 10,000 damage and light a fire on a Kremlin, for example. You do have to lead a little bit with this HE, that is a bit of the downside here, but they do really good damage with the high explosive. And now that I've been using it a little bit more, I feel like I really do get what this ship and this line can do. Uh, I, don't, I still don't think it's like the best line in the game, um, but they're certainly not the worst battleships at all. They're, they're quite strong, I would say. And something that really unlocked this multi-ammo type playstyle is sw switching over to gun feeder or expert loader, whatever it's called these days. It's really, really important to be able to swap over the EP when you notice a cruiser might be walking out from behind an island broadside uh, and you are just shooting high explosive at that angled battleship at range. Broadside Stalingrad, we don't have our plane for it, but 2.2 Sigma, guys. Should be good, right? And it is. <laughs> yes. Uh, I have been getting some more consistent broadside hits with this ship recently. Uh, might be because I'm not trying to force it quite as much as I was initially, or maybe I'm just getting used to the way this ship plays. Keep in mind, though, look at look at the aim point here. Plane's up. Look at that aim point. We're aiming right at his turrets, uh, which is pretty good center mass for a high explosive hit. Um, but this aiming system is broken. Yeah, it all just lands short. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's it's a little rough out here uh, playing World of Warships these days. You really, really do notice the the weakness of the aiming system with this ship, given the Sigma, and when you have the plane up, um, you aim somewhere and then the shells just go somewhere else entirely. But when they do land, this is where the HE comes into play because that's twelve thousand damage, <laughs> and he's angled. Um, it's a lot like overmatch damage. It just yeah, there's no avoiding it, really. Um, it might be even more difficult to avoid because you can light fires as well. Even though the fire chance isn't amazing on the Bungo here, it's still going to light some fires here and there, and that consistent damage is pretty difficult to deal with. Next salvo. Wow, even more. <laughs> yeah, the consistency is definitely there. Uh, so if you are going to be playing these ships, I definitely recommend using the high explosive. It didn't really work out too well on the tier eight video yesterday, but realistically, you're not playing that one for that long, I don't think. Tier nine and 10 with the 457s. Yeah, it's just 10,000 damage every single time into this poor Yamato with the high explosive. So that rule that I talked about yesterday really is that outside 15 kilometers, you're really not going to be hitting much with the armor piercing all that well, so you may as well just shoot high explosive. And then anytime a cruiser gives you broadside or a battleship at really close range, you, you can try the AP, but the high explosive does feel like the correct ammo type on this ship. A bit disappointingly for me personally, I do enjoy our AP damage, especially broadside AP damage. I do find overmatch and high explosive to be just a little bit less satisfying. Uh, I don't get that feeling like I caught someone making a mistake, I outplayed someone with positioning, that kind of thing, when I get those broadside hits in. Overmatch and HE kind of just don't deal with that. I did show you guys this clip earlier uh, in the tier 8 video yesterday, but I had to show it again just in a mainline Bungo video where I tell you the ship's not actually that bad because 21,000 HE damage! <laughs> yeah, it's into a carrier, uh, which feels pretty good. but. That can happen against battleships as well. And one of the main reasons I do find myself not wanting to use the armor piercing out at these longer ranges is a shot like this one specifically. I know Bungo is supposed to have around Montana levels of AP pen at these longer ranges. Unfortunately, this Slava does go dark, so I can't show you directly, uh, but that is some pretty tight dispersion and he's broadside to us. 
and we get five shatters. I really think that Montana would be giving citadels there. It wouldn't just be shattering on a broadside Slava at 16 kilometers, where Bungo does. And Slava's not even that well protected, let's be honest here. The armor levels are not great for a tier 10 battleship, especially that broadside armor. It lacks a lot compared to, say, Kremlin. They, they nerfed it down quite a bit, and yet Bongo is still going to be shattering on it. So HE would have just been a better ammo type to fire there. Aim a little higher into the upper belt and superstructure, and you're going to get a lot more damage out of it. But that's why we want to be swapping ammo types all the time. That's really the main idea behind this line. So we're going to try and find this Yamato here, while also keeping an eye out for this Petro. Something else that might help you against these broadside ships at times is spamming a lot of HE. might lull the enemy into thinking you don't shoot armor piercing. Uh, they might think you're just a bad player who's just going to spam HE only uh, out of your battleship. And they might go broadside onto you. Or maybe they'll just kind of see you as not much of a threat, and then just walk out broadside. And that's where we need to have that expert loader to swap over to the armor piercing. Broadside Petro. I mean, this thing is kind of difficult to hit since it's such a small ship um, low in the water. But hey, this time we do get ourselves a dev strike. So like I said, I have been getting some better hits with this thing into broadside ships. It just happens at closer ranges. Uh, inside 15 kilometers, maybe even 12, would be the ideal place to play the Bungo with the armor piercing. Uh, otherwise, just shoot the HE, man. You're gonna get 10,000 damage, you're gonna get fires here and there, and it's just gonna be fine. Uh, less satisfying, certainly, but at least you are gonna get some damage. And as I mentioned yesterday, I am averaging over 180,000 damage in this ship. Not a lot of games, mind you. Thanks to this ship not recording its stats before it released on Wednesday with the patch. Uh, so those games before that didn't really count where I was kind of learning the ship a little bit more. Uh, where it would have brought the average down, certainly. But the damage output is really good. But it's a lot like some of these other HE style battleships where the output isn't as impactful. Uh, HE damage just isn't as valuable, especially on battleships. If you're just shooting HE at battleships, they're gonna heal that, especially the fire damage. They're gonna heal that back. It's not as good as armor piercing damage into people, especially if you're looking for those radar cruisers, that kind of thing. Uh, that, that's gonna be more impactful damage, more valuable, I would say. So the average damage doesn't fully tell it, but at least this thing is capable of doing damage. I was a little worried about that, obviously. If you guys only saw the earlier videos on the Bungo, uh, the ship can definitely do some really, really nice damage. And it does, of course, have overmatch. Uh, I know I've kind of been downplaying that a little bit here, but it can do some really nasty things with the overmatch. And I don't really find it to be super consistent at range for whatever reason with this overmatch. Um, but at closer ranges, when you can guarantee hits into things that are 30 millimeters of armor and less, like this Vincent here, uh, it can be pretty good. I'm still probably going to be at longer ranges swapping over to HE, even if it is something like a Vincent that I can overmatch in some areas. Just the HE seems much, much more consistent to me. Uh, but here, we're going to pop our plane, I think, and shoot at his bow. At these closer ranges, of course, it should be some pretty good damage. It's difficult to Citadel Vincents, though, even at these closer ranges, since the Citadel is so low. And I am pretty low, and it's still... Still not quite enough, but that overmatch does uh, get us some pretty nice damage. It's a good ship, man. It is not as good as some of the best battleships at this tier, I don't think. But I have had some good games in it. Um, I probably... <laughs> I think I skewed the conversation on the Bungo a little bit, at least, at least on my channel, certainly, where... I think a lot of you think this ship is kind of trash. Because I thought it was trash at the beginning. Those first impressions were not very good. And I still believe that, those, those first impressions, that's, that's exactly how the ship felt um, initially. But using the HE a lot more than obviously zero in those initial impressions, it's worked out much better. And it has opened up some times where I do get these really, really nice broadside hits into people, but not trying to force them, I guess is the idea. And I'm always trying to force those at least before playing this last week, I have been trying to just force these broadside hits in, and then when they don't happen, it is pretty frustrating. 
Marseille at 16 kilometers. That's right on the edge of uh, me not trusting this armor piercing, but that is nearly his full health bar. <laughs> it can do this. It can do it, man. I Maybe I should go back and rewatch my initial video. I I mean, maybe I just got unlucky. I don't know. That's It's that uh, Satsuma or Shikishima that's just flashing back in my head. It's like close range, flat broadside, and we just get nothing. I mean... It's weird. It's weird. Maybe it's just the way the game is, right? Broadside ships, just... It's a roll of the dice, I guess. And Mungo does try and load those dice in your favor, especially with his spotter plane, but it still feels a little bit weird. But this game, 100k damage before five minutes in? That's that's pretty good, right? And that is mostly AP damage. It does include a near-dev strike, of course. Fairly fortunate to get that. But even there, like 20k into the broadside Columbo? I'll take that. I haven't mentioned it in this video yet, but we're just talking about the guns, of course. This ship also has to try and stay alive, which it does have some really nice concealment, but the armor just isn't really there, as well as the HP pool. So we're gonna take 20k sap damage, and that hurts a lot more when you only have 80,000 HP instead of like 100,000, like some of the other battleships at this tier would. We also only have the 25 mil bow and stern, 32 mil everywhere else, so you will have to play a little bit further back, uh, which is unfortunate since this AP, of course, does perform at its best at these closer ranges, but you will just die really, really quickly if you push in too much. Six bounces there. Um, I do think he was around a 30 degree angle to us when those hit, so that it does make sense that those bounce, but I have found that overall, something about these shells, they, they feel pretty weak. Um, Blind shots though, that is like 50,000 damage into that Schlieffen in a storm, <laughs> blind. How are we missing these Satsumas or whatever it was, a Shikishima in that first video spotted at these ranges, right? Like how are we missing these? Um, when the blind shots can work somehow. I was kind of on one in this game, I guess. So we're gonna actually get another one <laughs> and actually kill someone this time. Uh, Kind of ridiculous, but hey, it's working out this time. As I've played it more, I have had these much better games. I do think that I overstated how bad I thought this ship was initially, but it's a first impressions video, right? It can go bad, it can go good. This time it didn't go so well. At least these battleships do seem like a fine addition. They're just not as strong as I thought they'd be. On paper, they seem OP and they're just kind of middle of the range battleships in my opinion. All right, last, last couple of clips I have for you guys. Johan, he's pretty broadside. Now, 13.7 kilometers isn't too far away. We also have a decent amount of overmatch on our side and we pop our plane. It looks good and it hits very nicely. Only one sit, but pretty decent hit, certainly. And that's what I'm looking for. I'm just looking for those consistent hits when people go broadside out of this thing, especially with the plane up. That's kind of the gimmick of the ship, right? Is that when your plane is up, you have that 20% better consistency. Honestly, it might even be better than that, thanks to the way the dispersion ellipse is calculated. Um, it's not just a flat 20% is how I understand it. And that's two for two, you know, not a full dev strike, but we are landing those consistent hits and we managed to take out the cruiser that kind of just sits broadside. We're still gonna swap over to the HE, don't worry. Um, but that is something you need to worry about, is not getting trapped into the AP and thinking, oh, it's working this game? I'm gonna use it all the time. I had too many games like that where I started out really well with the AP and I stuck with it, and then I didn't swap. And then we're missing out on these 10,000 damage hits into battleships at range, getting a fire and everything. But this is it. This is gonna be the second last salvo you see out of this ship, because I've had some really good ones. Really good ones. And then we get this. I understand we're in a storm, but that is still playing up, right? We were even in a cyclone against the Schlieffen. We didn't even see him. Just kind of guessed using minimap aiming, and we got 50k into him. Sure, lucky, yes, obviously. But it's just like, don't give me that salvo, give me this one, you know? Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, give me the ones that should be just gimmies. 
And then he angles, and then we do the overmatch damage. And yes, it's good. It overmatch HE damage, yes. But it's not as satisfying to me. I want the broadside hits to give me damage, not the angled ones, not the gimmick overmatch or HE. As for the build that I've settled on with these ships, it's a pretty standard battleship build outside of this. Brisk here, I mean, Brisk is of course gonna be good uh, with 12 kilometer detect here. It's nice for flanking, getting those opportunistic shots a little bit easier, but you do need grease the gears here on these higher tier ones. We still only have a 41 second turret traverse. It's pretty bad. And that's the improved one we get on Yamamoto here. So tough to take two of those because you miss out on a tier three skill now. Um, typically I would have gone gun feeder, grease the gears, and then adrenaline rush. And then we get to take basic survivability yet, as well as the three standard skills. But on this one, I do think Brisk is worth giving up basics um, just to use concealment and get out to flanks a little bit easier. And then we have one extra skill that I'm not using, so consumable specialist. That is what I'm going for. Now you might be wondering about super heavy AP shells if we're wanting to buff the AP a little bit more. I, d I have been trying that, uh, at least initially, and it didn't really do much. Um, if you're hitting citadels, the damage feels good. If you're hitting citadels with super heavy AP shells, the damage still feels really good. Uh, but the shell type, right? We're not buffing the shell to hit more consistently, to have a little more pen or whatever the crop values are or pen angles, I don't know. Whatever it is, it kind of feels like the World War I shells equivalent, right? Where we have that at these mid tiers. Uh, what's the good example? Is it Ashitaka? This one? Yeah, it's a tier seven, but you get the uh, gun layout from a Amagi, right? But it's like the World War I hull and you get the World War I shells, which kind of suck in comparison to, to actual Amagi shells, right? Like that's what these things feel like. That's what this line feels like to me. It feels like you've got the World War I shells and they kind of just aren't good. <laughs> They can work, but only at closer ranges and only at optimal angles. Otherwise, just shoot the HE. Uh, that's what it comes down to. Upgrades here, still sticking with the same thing, especially on the tier 10 here. This plane is just so valuable because it gives you 20% uh, shell dispersion, whereas the tier nine and the tier eight, these ones are only 10%. So pretty massive difference there. Uh, so Bungo does get the best of that in this line. And it's pretty good. It's a pretty good battleship. It's a pretty good line. Not uh, not my favorite, though, certainly. And uh, probably not the worst, though, like I was saying it might be. I just want those consistent hits, man. Uh, I'd rather not have the gimmick HE, the gimmick overmatch. And I'd rather have just more consistent hits on those broadside ships. Take away the damage output at those angles. Just give me those broadside hits. I'm not asking for it to just do the gimmick HE and overmatch and give me dev strikes every time. But I am wanting it to do just a little more consistent damage when people make mistakes and a little less damage when people are angling properly, that kind of thing. Because especially on those that Yamato in the first game, I think, where it was 11,000, 12,000, 10,000 and fires here and there. That's not fun to play against, is it? Right? I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm just wrong. Maybe I'm just this confused BB main, um, but that's kind of my take. That's kind of my uh, look at things. So there it is, the last video on Bungo for a while, at least until these things release out of early access. Hope you guys enjoyed my little uh, saga here on these ships. <laughs> uh, it's a lot of videos, I apologize. Uh, we will be playing some other things. I'm probably gonna go through the Black Friday uh, missions. So we'll be playing some of the Black Friday ships or at least their counterparts to get the missions done. So we'll see what those ones look like uh, in the next couple of weeks. So thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.